Dallas Cowboys rumors and news is made possible by our friends over at Magic Spoon. Get $5 off the best tasting healthy cereal out there on the market when you go over to magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Worth absolutely every penny. It tastes like the sugary stuff we grew up with, but it's actually good for you. So try out Magic Spoon with a boxer, maybe four, at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Some Cowboys COVID updates and one injury note too I'll mix in here. We have to get two to start off today's video. First up is DeMonte Casey. Now, Casey was away from the team today as he was awaiting a retest for COVID-19 as the Cowboys deal with those issues off the field right now. The Cowboys have four players currently on the reserve list. As we sit here filming this, the Cowboys have not placed Casey on that list. In fact, they actually waived somebody else get that, to get down to the 80-man roster limit. So I don't have final confirmation on Casey, but that's the update on him. Hopefully he's able to be cleared in the very near future. Now for the other starting safety. I know there was some concern. Oh, Wilson left practice. See if the COVID too. No, no, no. Not what's going on here. Wilson did leave practice basically at the start on Tuesday, taken off the field by head coach Jim Maurer, apparently dealing with a sore groin. That is the report that came through just before we started today's video. So Casey and Wilson both were not at practice really today for the Dallas Cowboys. And you throw in the fact that two other safeties are also in the Cowboys' COVID protocol right now with Israel Mukwamu and Lee Cooker to go along with Carlos Watkins, C.D. Lamb. Oh, by the way, Mike McCarthy said today that two players are close contacts and two players uh, have actually tested positive, even though all four players, according to various reports, were vaccinated. So something's not right on that front. I know Mukwamu hasn't completed his little waiting period, but somebody not being honest what they put out there in terms of, unless McCarthy's wrong, about being vaccinated. Either way, the Cowboys right now are thin at the safety position due to injury with Donovan Wilson and the COVID situation. At practice today, the Cowboys were down to Jerron Curse, Darian Thompson, Stephen Parker, and Tyler Coyle. In all likelihood, maybe two of those guys end up making your active roster. Now, the Cowboys' COVID issues come in light of the fact that the Cowboys still, of course, according to the team, were about 93% vaccinated. Jerry Jones has said that the team is going to get to 100%. And they're going to be right up there with the rest of the NFL. And amid the COVID issues, Jerry Jones did not really hold back in his comments to, to the media. Now, as a reminder, the Cowboys worked virtually on Monday, returned to practice, minus Casey on Tuesday. But Jerry made it very clear how the team is going to be approaching this. Quote, everyone has the right to make their own decision regarding their health, their body. I believe that completely until your decision negatively impacts many others. Then the common good takes over. We have to check I at the door and go forward with we. Now, following along, Jerry, this entire COVID process, that those comments should not come as much of a surprise. And in fact, in particular, he's very much right as it relates to the football team because there is a definitive competitive advantage to having the vaccine versus not. You can go ask Cole who has got to be away for five days because it's close contact, even though he tested negative. All of those things go into Jerry Jones's comments. So knowing this might cause some issues as it relates to the comment section, do you agree with Jerry Jones's comments? Get your votes in for me. Type Y for yes, you do, or type in N for no, you do not. L let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section. All right, we'll go rapid fire now with some more Cowboys news and notes. P.J. Hall, Dalen Mack, Donald Rutledge, and Connor Strachan are all part of the workouts the Cowboys did on Monday. Now, I will make note that these are probably going to be more potential practice squad options. Two areas of the Cowboys are a little bit thin right now. The two most notable names, first up, P.J. Hall, former second-round pick, surprisingly, out of Sam Houston State. Now, has never lived up to his potential. I'll also make note Hall is dealing with some legal issues right now, facing a misdemeanor assault charge, worth keeping in mind. There's also Dalen Mack, who 
fatties only, baby, could live with him. I liked him coming out of Texas A&M. I thought he was a potentially promising player. He bounced around a lot of different NFL teams last year and then was cut by the Tennessee Titans back in June. All of those things significantly impactful as it relates to the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll keep an eye on those players as I think potential practice squad guys for Dallas. Now with that in mind, name a player who you guys want to sign. You can go big name or you can go smaller name like a Dalen Mack or a PJ Hall. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section. A player who you guys want to add. All right, time now for some good news here. Greg Zerline, is he going to return to the Cowboys? The plan here is for Zerline to kick against the Jags. That's the report from the Dallas Morning News, and that's a very promising development for Dallas. Zerline has been on the pup list all preseason due to off-season back surgery. His return is a big deal for Dallas. And as an indication of how the Cowboys are feeling about Zerline's potential return, they've chosen to already release Liam Hairulahu, the kicker they signed before the, the, uh, the Texans game to kick in that particular one because Hunter Nicewander was banged up. Hairulahu has been waived by Dallas. And oh, just so we're clear, this is a very clear sign. The Cowboys feel good about Greg Zerline. He's going to be the kicker, and Brian Anger, meanwhile, is going to be the punter for this team for at least this season, assuming both guys play well and are healthy. Today's show made possible by Magic Spoons. Speaking of healthy, eating this cereal is a lot better than some of the sugary stuff we grew up with. And it still tastes great. It tastes just like that sugary, teeth-rotting stuff we had, but it's actually good for you. So get $5 off your first order at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. There will be a clickable link, by the way, in the comment section and in the description. I love the frosted. Tastes incredible. I love the peanut butter, the fruity as well. If you're into, if you're into chocolate, they've got a great tasting cocoa as well. I'm not a big chocolate guy myself, but it's still pretty good. Get five bucks off your first order at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Of course, we have to update Everything on Dak Prescott because, I mean, how can we not, right? Uh, Dak's workload is still being ramped up right now for the Cowboys. He may or may not do any team or seven-on-seven seven throwing this particular week at practice. The plan, meanwhile, is to have him unleashed next week leading up to the regular season start against the Bucks. If he does not get unleashed, then you know what, Pry, go ahead and up your concern level a little bit there. The Cowboys keep saying, and I'm inclined to believe them, Dak could have played if this was a real game. They chose not to because it's the preseason, and after all, a third of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL have not played in a preseason game at this point. With that in mind, what is your concern level? Over Dak Prescott. Rate this for me on a scale of one to ten. One being you are immensely, or one being you're not concerned at all. Ten being you are in full-fledged meltdown mode. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Let's talk rumors now. Micah Parsons and Keanu Neal. Are they the starters? I am giving this three stars, but a lot of this, why it's not four, comes down to how we define starters. Against the Texans, the linebackers with the first snap were Micah Parsons and Keanu Neal. But the Cowboys were in a nickel package. And I think that Parsons and Neal, for the most part, are going to be this team's particular starters as it relates at the linebacker position. They are going to be the ones out there the most frequently. Now for Neal, I don't know if he's going to end up being a go-to option as it relates to Dallas in base packages. And it depends on how we define starter. Does starter mean getting the most snaps? If so, I think it could very well be Parsons and Neal, maybe Leighton Van Der Esch. If starter means who gets the first snap, well, then it might be a different unit if they are in their base, more three linebacker front. Here are the first half snaps for the Cowboys against the Texans. And this was the starting unit out there, minus guys like Tank Lawrence who are not playing. Micah Parsons got 18. Ken O'Neill, 15. LVE, 13. Jalen Smith, 12. So there was a heavy rotation, but there is a tiering that has emerged for the Cowboys as it relates to the linebacker position. Micah Parsons at number one. Ken O'Neill right now, 
number two. Leighton Vanderesh is number three. Jalen Smith is four. And then Jabril Cox is number five. So I kind of settled on my answer to this question a couple weeks ago. Who ends up playing the most snaps at the linebacker position? I think it ends up being Micah Parsons if everyone is healthy. Then I think it's a battle between Neil and LV. I think Jalen's kind of fourth right now. But get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. I don't think LV has been bad in the preseason, just so we're clear. I think he's actually played pretty well. I think he's had a good camp, good preseason. But he's been overshadowed by the likes of Keanu Neal and Micah Parsons. Is he going to be the weak side linebacker in base packages and then Neal comes on in nickel? That could be a look for the Cowboys. Meanwhile, Jalen Smith, I still think there is a role for him on this team. Maybe more as a edge setter against the run a little bit and probably being a run-stopping linebacker. I don't think the team wants him, at least the coaching staff wants him out there in coverage. We'll see exactly how they are deployed as the season, though, moves along. And we're going to keep you guys covered on everything going on around the Dallas Cowboys this season and, of course, the rest of the preseason for the final game that remains. If you want daily videos on everything going on around America's team, hit that big red button and subscribe. The link is right there if you need it, but you're watching on YouTube. So instead, hit that big red button and subscribe today. I also wanted to discuss, however brief, the Connor McGovern situation for the Cowboys. How about him becoming the backup center? Just the one star here. I am open to this idea because we've seen McGovern play center in college, at least a little bit, for Penn State. Despite that, the Cowboys haven't given McGovern any reps at center this preseason. Clearly, the takeaway should be the Cowboys don't trust McGovern to handle that role. Instead, they've tried to make Connor Williams the backup center with so far, very underwhelming, but maybe not that surprising given his lack of experience. Reps at the position, very strange, very interesting from that perspective. Matt Farniak, by the way, at practice on Tuesday, even got some more reps as the backup center. So of the two Connors, I would like to see McGovern out there. And I want to hear from you guys as well. Pick a backup center. Type CM for Connor McGovern or type in CW for Connor Williams. Get your votes in for me in the comments section. Now, trying to figure out why the Cowboys haven't deployed this yet. Well, McGovern wasn't great against the Texans, especially in pass protection. It was his fault, not Terrence Steele, as far as I'm concerned, on that stunt pickup that led to the sack. McGovern had his worst of two previously good preseason games, and I wonder if part of the reason why is because the Cowboys asked McGovern in that game to play both left guard and right guard. That is not an easy thing to do. You're totally flipping your footwork. And I wonder if the Cowboys theory is that they don't trust McGovern to be able to play guard and center. And they think it might be worse than what it would be with Connor Williams. Now, I would have liked to have seen that out there. I want to see it with my own eyes since this is the same team that told you Darian Thompson over Donovan Wilson. But I'm trying to figure out why the Cowboys haven't given McGovern center reps. And I think that could be the reason.